52100, 52100, 52100, and 52100. Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I've got a tip of the day video for you. Or maybe it's more of a just a, a discussion. We'll sit down and talk about some steel for a minute. Something that I like to do. Geek out on steel a little bit. So if you like that, this is the video for you. I just got done forging a batch, a big batch of knives this week, and I'm now rough grinding, or grinding about half of them. So taking a little break from that, standing in the grinder for extended periods of time, kind of get stiff, you know. So you gotta take a little break here and there. So I wanted to uh, talk about 52100 steel uh, because I like talking about steel, and 52100 steel is my main, my go-to steel. It's the steel that I make most of my knives out of now and have for a while now. I still use a few different other steels depending on the project that I'm doing, but by and large, uh, most of my knives are 52100. And, you know, I, I came to that conclusion after uh, years, several years, um, you know, of sort of research and trying a few different steels and uh, thinking about, you know, what it is that I was trying to uh, get from a steel, you know, the best steel that I could get for what I'm doing. So we'll talk about that. But 52100 steel, uh, it was developed as a bearing steel about a hundred years ago. So for example, here's a bearing right here. This is a big truck bearing. And, you know, I thought this would be a neat idea. It's a neat object lesson, I guess you could say, uh, something like that. You know, what what is it about this bearing here the steel that's in this bearing that would make a good knife. How does this compare to, for example, this nice little Santoku style blade that I'm working on? You know, not really the same, right? Pretty dissimilar. And yet the same steel uh, works well for both applications. So why is that? So it's an opportunity to look at the characteristics of 5200 steel. So think about a bearing. It's got load, it has pressure, weight, you know, however you want to say it, on this assembly. There's an outer ring, which I don't have, your your rollers or ball bearings as the case may be, and then the inner ring. And all of those main parts are made from 5200 typically. This retainer here is just mild steel, I guess, and it's not really part of the discussion. So you've got weight on this assembly. It has to be able to uh, resist deformation. Like for example, these rollers right here, you can't have them squishing. Uh, it has to be able, that's a technical term, no squishing. And so it has to be able to resist deformation. That's strength. That's a characteristic of steel that you need for this particular application. Secondly, you have uh, surface contact. And although these are round, it's rolling, it's all greased up, you know, the, the friction is diminished as much as possible. That's sort of the whole point here. Nevertheless, you do have surface contact and take into consideration the longevity of the part in hundreds of thousands of rotations and uh, wear resistance becomes an important characteristic for this steel. You don't want it to wear out um, quickly comparative to the job that it's uh, put under. And then finally, as far as I can see it, you need something that is uh, tough enough. You know, you don't you don't want this steel here, any of these parts, to be displaying brittle behavior. You don't want it to crack, fracture, chip, etc., under this weight or this load that it that it's on this part. And so it needs to be have a certain level of toughness. And so 5200 steel meets all of those requirements to build this part and it does so also this is important in a cost effective and uh, efficient manner you know so if there was something better for this application yeah i don't think they would be still using the same steel for over 100 years if there was something better and it it's also not just how the steel performs but because conceivably you can come up with a steel that does all of those things better but, you know, how much is that going to cost? Like, once you get into your high alloy steels and all these different things, you're looking at a pretty significant cost increase. And so that's a consideration in industry, but it's also a consideration for the bladesmith. So 
within certain parameters, 5200 steel is the best option. And also, you know, it comes to, to ease of manufacture. That's another big consideration for industry and uh, the bladesmith, you know, whether how, how easy it is to forge, how easy it is to heat treat and, and all this kind of stuff. So we'll talk about that in a second here. But so the next question is, how does 5200 steel as a steel meet those characteristics? How does it do it? Well, first of all, 5200 steel is a high carbon steel. It has about 1% carbon in it. And as blade steels go, that's less than some, but higher than I would say most, at, at least when it comes to high carbon steels. Once you get into your high alloy and your uh, stainless steels, those typically have considerable amount more of carbon. That's not really part of our discussion because we're talking about steels that you can forge, steels that you can sharpen easily, and steels that hold an excellent edge under a given task. So it has a high carbon content. Uh, that's necessary, you know, up to at least about 0.6% carbon is necessary to reach a level of hardness, in my understanding, that would be applicable to an application like this. And then beyond 0.77% carbon, the steel is then able to uh, precipitate carbides with the excess carbon, and that is very important for abrasion resistance. Basically, very tiny, hard uh, particles within the steel matrix of the steel that resist abrasion or wear. So that's two, two uh, that, that high carbon content is kind of knocks out two of those requirements. And then as far as toughness, uh, there's about one and a half percent chromium in this steel, which really helps with the toughness and it also helps with some of those other things as well. So let's talk about that. First thing that the chromium does is it slows the, well, it helps with the heat treat process because it slows the necessary cooling, initial cooling rate for uh, hardening the steel. You get a steel like 1095, for example, it's not going to fully harden or reach its full uh, potential hardness unless it's cooled at a very fast rate initially. And that um, chromium content in the 5200 slows that process down to where you don't have to cool it as fast and it will still achieve maximum hardness. So that's uh, helpful when it comes to manufacture and it's also, uh, it, well it's helpful with that but it's just, it's more foolproof I guess you can say. It's, it's hard to, for one thing it's hard to cool steel, steel that quickly and uh, avoid uh, fracture or cracking and so that presents a lot of other problems. So that allows you to cool it at a slower rate and achieve the hardness and therefore the strength that you want in the steel. Um, so additionally, the chromium content helps regulate the amount of carbon that you're putting into solutions because just as it slows things down, uh, it's part of the same process, slowing down that carbon um, movement, so to speak, within the steel. And that helps regulate the amount of carbon that you're putting into solution because contrary to what you might think or what some people may say, you do not want to put all of that 1% carbon into solution. Uh, that, that could lead to brittle behavior. And so the chromium helps with that. And then finally, the chromium does help keep the grain size down, the grain structure small. And that really helps with toughness as well. So some several really good things that that uh, chromium content does and works together with that high carbon content to make a very in my experience, very tough, uh, great steel that just holds an edge really well when it comes to the knife application. <clears throat> so talking about that, how does a steel that performs well as a bearing steel apply to a knife? So let's talk about that. Because all these characteristics that we just talked about and how that steel, how the 5200 steel accomplishes that is very important for application in a knife. If you got a knife here, this one does not have an edge on it yet. It's not even uh, finished ground yet. It's about halfway through the process, but just imagine that it has an edge. It's very thin. The, this uh, blade is ground fairly thin right now. It's gonna be a little bit thinner before I'm done. And the edge is gonna be very thin. You know, on this particular knife, about 10 thousandths behind the edge before I put a bevel on it, 10 to 15 maybe. That's gonna vary depending on the knife and what it's used for. But whatever the case is, you've got a thin cross section on your blade. 
and as you're cutting something, that thin cross section is uh, is coming against comparatively very or per square inch is a very high pressure. That's what I'm trying to say. It needs to be able to resist deformation, just like in the case of a high pressure application such as this. It has to be able to resist deformation. As soon as you get deformation, you get a dull knife, whether it's you know just crushing, flattening the edge, or rolling it over. In any of those cases, you lose your edge, you have a dull knife. So that strength, that resist, resistance to deformation or hardness is important. And the 5200 steel fills that bill nicely. So secondly, we have abrasion resistance. So anytime you're cutting something, whether it's a piece of rope or twine or a cardboard box or vegetables or meat or anything, to one degree or another, it has, it has an abrasive uh, effect on the edge of the steel. And remember, again, you know, it's a very thin cross section. And so that, that uh, abrasive effect in essentially is accentuated or amplified because of that very, very minimal surface area that you're contacting. And so, you're, it, you know, it's going to have a greater effect on it. You could scrape the spine of this knife on something all day long and it's not really going to change it much. But everything has an abrasive effect to one degree or another on that knife blade. And so the carbides that are in this steel, because of the high carbon content, allow for greater abrasion resistance than most of your high carbon steels that you'll find in knives. And that is another reason why 5200 steel is great for a blade steel. And then finally, the toughness aspect that we just talked about a minute ago with the bearing stuff. When it comes to the edge, toughness is also important as well because you don't want the edge to chip, break, fracture, or exhibit brittle behavior in, in any manner. Once you do that, you've broken off that sharp, on the microscopic level even, you've broken off the sharp uh, edge on your knife and you, you have a dull knife. So toughness is also very important on the uh, microscopic edge level. So those three applications or three characteristics necessary for this application are also very important for this application as well. I find that interesting and fun to, fun to think about and you know beyond that when they develop a steel, and, I, and I've never developed a steel or anything like that, I don't do that, but I, I use steels and understanding how the components of a steel, uh, the composition lends itself to particular applications is important. And then beyond that, you have to know how to heat treat it properly. You can take a really good steel, heat treat it improperly and end up with a really lousy knife or tool or whatever. So that's important. Uh, but I, I'm not gonna get into the heat treat process or anything like that today. If that's something that you would uh, like to see, I have been thinking about doing a, an in-depth video on how I heat treat 5200 steel, and it is all based on practical application and performance of the knife. And that includes all these three characteristics that we talked about, as well as you know overall toughness of the blade, which also plays into the blade design and things like that, but if that's something you'd like to see, throw it in the comments and uh, we, we might be able to do that in the future here. I really like 5200 steel. It's a great steel for, you know, probably 90% of the blades that I make now, uh, the, the, the majority of them at least. And, uh, you know, it's got some, just like any steel, it's got some different characteristics or idiosyncrasies with it that you have to learn about and, and learn how to work with it. But it's, uh, it's great stuff and I really, I like it. So. I thought I'd talk about it, talk about it. So anyway, that's kind of it for today, guys. Um, you know, just trying to crank out, crank out the product and um, got some, got a great idea for a video coming up next week. And uh, if you're regular to the channel, you know, you'll stay tuned for that because there's some different ideas that we have that are fun. And I think this one's, I think this one's going to be good as well. So don't anything else to say, so better stop talking. As always, appreciate you guys watching, and we will see you on the next video.